Hey guys, Paul Dovecchio here. So today I was playing around with some looks and some footage that I shot while on the Brooklyn Bridge. This first one is a reddish, more neutral kind of look, and the second one is a more green, faded kind of look. Now we all know the faded blacks is a stylistic look and a very popular look right now. It's kind of trendy. For good reason, because it does make the footage look more vintage. It does have a very cinematic look to it. So let's just explore this a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is start with my raw footage. This is the Ursa Mini Pro shot with a Leica R Summicron 35mm at f2. You can see here nothing really is clipping and if we want to look at the settings in camera you can see here the Kelvin is 5600. This is basically just the daylight preset that's built into the camera. So it's 5600, tint is at 10, the compression ratio is actually 12 to 1. I was testing this for Blackmagic trying out the different compression ratios to see if there were any disadvantages to them what the main differences were. I have to say that 12 to 1 compression is actually really good. Nowadays most of the stuff that I shoot is Q4 Five, unless it's a bigger project with a little bit bigger of a budget, then I can go to Q0 or I can use a compression ratio of 3 to 1 or 5 to 1. But for most of my personal stuff, I'm using Q5 and I don't really see any difference, especially if you're making movies or you're making videos for the web. Okay, let's jump right into making this look. And again, there are multiple ways to do things, so this is not the only way to do it. So I'm going to start with my basic starting point. Again, it's a color space transform into the Arri Alexa LUT and then I open up the shadows a bit because the Alexa LUT crushes them down and then I add a color boost of five because I feel that brings the less saturated colors up just enough and I feel it's a really good starting point. First thing I notice is that the exposure is a little too high so I just go into the raw controls here and actually because I had raw settings saved in this power grade it actually kind of messes up the camera raw tab so I just go in and reset it now I have access to those I have no idea why that happens but that's what happens so I just reset it and then I go rec 709 for the color space and for the gamma I transform it to linear and then again this first node is transforming the input color space from rec 709 and the input gamma which is linear to an output color space of the Arri Alexa and output gamma of Arri Log C. Next thing I'm going to do is drop the exposure so I'm just going to take this and drop it down about a stop until I feel it looks good. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the fourth node which is right after the Arri Alexa LUT and I'm just going to drop my shadows to zero. They're about at zero. You might be wondering what this empty node is here. You might see that a lot and that's just to do any kind of relights before the LUT so if anything gets too dark I can just kind of come in here and do a relight pre-LUT and I feel that that works better than going in and doing it after the LUT because once you apply the LUT it clips so you lose that data so I feel having a node before the LUT actually helps out with that. So now that my shadows are at zero I'm going to come into my saturation node. I always bump up the saturation after the color boost because again this is the starting point so it's just order of operations for me. So I'm going to bump up the saturation and I think that's good. So I created another node and now I'm just going to come in here and actually generate the look. What I first want to do is push red into the shadows and that makes it really red. And then I'm going to counteract that by pushing blue into the midtones. So you can kind of see the effect here. It kind of brings it back to where it was, but there's more red in the shadows now. And I'm just going to kind of keep doing that until I find a good balance. Until I find something that I think looks good. And you can see here because the red channel is lifted it kind of has that faded look already but the other two channels are still either below zero or at zero and so it doesn't quite have 100% of that faded look yet. As a final measure I'm just going to push the highlights toward yellow and this kind of gives me an overall yellow greenish blue look. The highlights are more yellow. As the levels transition into the midtones they get more of a greenish bluish look and as they transition into the shadows they get more of a reddish look. Now I feel like the red is a little bit too much so I'm going to pull some red out of the shadows. I feel like I went too far there. And I think I think that's cool. So I'm going to make another node and now I'm going to play with the curve and this is how you get that faded look. I usually like to start by putting a point here and then lifting the shadows. You can see here that it kind of gives the footage a faded look. Now one of the problems with this is if your exposure was a little further up, you just don't notice the faded look as much because it's only affecting the shadows. But if a lot of your image is in the shadows, then the fade covers more of the range of the image. So if you're looking at just this as I zoom in here, you can kind of see as I get rid of that faded look, the shadows go a little bit deeper. And I'm actually going to get rid of this node here because it's actually pushing the red channel up so if I just disable that you can see that everything kind of evens out at the low end. This is just for illustrative purposes but I'm just going to push now the shadows up and you can see how that faded look is kind of coming into a lot of the dark areas but that's if the exposure is up and the more I increase it the less of a faded look it has. So that's why I like at the beginning to bump the exposure down to negative one so I'm dropping it by a stop because now more of the range of the image is being affected by this faded look. 
And then you can play around with this even more by moving this point, and you can see that a lot more of the image has that faded look. So it depends on how strong you want this to look, and you can just move this point left or right to kind of play around and see how much of the image you want to look faded. I think we're pretty good there. I might just push it a little bit more. And I'm going to re-enable our color look. And now it has a very kind of vintage faded look. But the colors are still popping and it looks really nice. One thing about the Leica Sumicron series, the Leica R Sumicron series lenses, is that they have a very soft micro contrast, meaning they're not very snappy as compared to something like the Sigma 18 to 35 or the Sigma Art series. In fact, I think the Leica Rs don't have a coating, or if they do, it's very minimal and it doesn't really affect the image too much, and that's why there is less contrast. And plus, Leica is just known for being less snappy and less contrasty than a lot of the more popular lenses now. So this is an overall nice look, but I think I want to punch it up just a little bit more. So I'm going to make another node here, and I'm going to use the mid-tone detail to just kind of add more local contrast, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So as I pump this up, let's see where I'm at right now, 59. So that's, that's pretty high. I'm just going to drop it down to like 50. But as I enable and disable this node, you can kind of see how the local contrast of the image is increased. And that's what gives it more of that snappy poppy kind of look or a sharper look. The next step might be a little confusing because I just added sharpness to the image by using the midtone detail. But what I'm going to do is actually jump in and blur the image here. So let's go full screen so we can see this. I'm just going to blur it to kind of enhance that vintage look. So you might be saying, well, if you're going to blur it, why did you add midtone detail before the blur? And the answer is just to kind of give it more contrast, even though I'm blurring it. If you could see as I enable and disable the midtone detail or the midtone detail node, You can kind of see that it's a softer image, but I kind of like how that pops because you can see more detail. Even though it's blurred, you can still see more contrast and detail in the textures of the bridge and in the buildings as well. And of course, you can see it in people's faces. So I think the blur adds a nice vintage look, but then adding the mid-tone detail before the blur counteracts it, but not so much in a way to get rid of that vintage look. And I just feel like it overall gives it a better look. I mean, that's just personal taste. And finally, we have film convert here. I usually like to use 35 millimeter Academy. It's a bigger grain structure, so it's larger, so it kind of shows up more. It's a little more aggressive. So what I'm gonna do is actually just reset this to 100. And this is, pretty aggressive. I, I do think it looks kind of cool, but it is very aggressive. I like to kind of drop it down to maybe around 75, roughly around 75 or so. That kind of takes away a bit of that aggressive look, but you can still see it in the blacks here, which is actually kind of nice. I love that. And that pretty much completes the look. Now, I just want to jump back into this node because this is where I applied the color. And as you can see in this one, it's a completely different color than this one and this one and I went pretty aggressive on this one that we just designed. A little less aggressive here, this one has a completely different look. One of the things too in this one that you can see is that there's a bit of highlight compression, which I didn't do in what we did. So I'm just gonna jump back to the curve that I did. And if you wanna get that highlight compression or if you just don't want those highlights to pop as much and you want them to be more subdued, you can just pull the curve down here or the gain. I'm going to do it with the curve so you can actually see it. And I think that's cool. You know, we're talking about that versus that. That's with the curve up all the way. And this is with it pulled down. And I think that's kind of cool. But one of the things that you can do after you pull it down is push up the top to make kind of like an S curve here. And you can see the effect that that's having on the image. And that actually gives us more contrast and we can see more detail in the bridge and it gives us a nice look. So it really depends on what you're going for. So I'm actually gonna jump back into the color node. You can actually just play around with this and now that you have the look dialed in, you can actually just reset it or you can do whatever you want. You can go less aggressive and you know maybe a warmer kind of tone overall. It is a little bit more neutral, but actually I think it does look pretty cool. There we go, and that's that's a pretty cool look, I think. You know, it's a different look than this, which is a completely different look from this. It's a different color look. So you can see there are so many different variations of color that we can do here that give this a very cool look, but also you have to be careful that you don't go too far, or maybe that is the look that you want, and you do go too far, which is kind of where I'm at right now. 
So pick your color palette. It's always best to pick complementary colors. So if you're going to push, let's say, warm into the highlights, you probably want to push a cool tone into the shadows. Or if you're going to push warm into the shadows, you want to either push the midtones or the highlights into a cool kind of color. And um, that'll give you a nice complementary color look which is pretty cool. The one thing about quote-unquote destroying footage like this is that it's almost as if the more you degrade footage, the more cinematic it looks. We add grain on top of it, we fade the blacks, we add blur. As we're kind of destroying the footage, it's also kind of looking, in a way, very cinematic. So, of course, this is a very specific look and you can't use it for everything, but it is very cool and you should get in there and experiment and try different things. Once again, this is Paulo Vecchio. Hopefully this helped. So I hope that maybe this helped you out and made you think about things a little bit differently or gave you some ideas on certain looks that you would like to accomplish. If you have any questions, hit me up, paul at pauldv.net, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.